Okay. I'm just setting up the live stream. It won't be long. Famous last words. <laughs> So, first things first, I need to go and get the airplane started up. So, I so am not going to be with you for the next few minutes. The art of the chili saying seems to be falling in love with this one. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to work through the checklist quickly, get this thing up and running. So control one, and we throw the battery switch and the voltage rises. Then we go to control four, and we turn on the voltmeter switch, and then the generators, which are here, 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 and here. Then we go to the pilot's view. I've already got the anchor out so I don't have to do that. So then control 3 goes to lighting, turn the strobes to on, which is the position lights basically. Uh, fuel valves, control 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Clutch levers, control six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, the fuel valves are already opened. Start engines, port engineer, control six again, which will bring us back to here. Okay, so nebulizer on. And now I just need to remember how to do all of this. So oh, well, let's, let's go and do the um, magnetos before we do anything else as well. So magnetos. And also the... I'm just going to lower ourselves down. So this is the safeties on the ignitions. And switch ignition on on all of the engines safeties first and then ignitions ah but -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. okay so which side was I going to do first I've already done the nebulizer so engine number one compressed air and start Engine number two, start. Engine number three, start. And turn that one off. Compressed air switched over. Engine number four, and start. Engine number five, start. Engine 
engine number six. Start. So then the ignitions for those engines can come back off. The nebulizer can be switched off and the compressed air can be switched off and we can spin around and do the other six engines. So nebulizer goes on, compressed air goes on, Engine number five, and start. And we have a good start. Should we move the camera around so we can see these starting a bit nicer? Um, engine number... What have I just done? That's one, two, three, and four. We're doing these ones, aren't we? I thought we were, yes. Ah, uh, start. And next one. And number eleven. And finally, engine number twelve. Hey, we have 12 good engines. So, the, the, the view switches around, doesn't it? It loses where you're looking. I've never noticed that before. So then, that comes back off, this comes back off, the ignition can go back to run for all engines, and I think we're good. And, oh, you turn off the nebulizer as well. Okay, so following that, what do we do next? Let's go and whiz through my notes. So, oh, we've got to lock the guards. I forgot to do that. So, let's lower ourselves down and we can do this a little bit more confidently. Conf lock. Up is locked. Up, up, up. Make sure these are up as well. They're all up. Yes, good. Okay. So back to the pilot station. Raise the anchor now. To the lights. Let's come on. We press B to calibrate the altimeter. It was nearly correct anyway. And we're ready to take off. So, this is where it becomes fun. So, Janik, or Yannick is saying um, he's just done a flight in the DOEX. It's good fun, isn't it? Okay, so we're taking off alongside the bank here, Friedrich Schaffen. Sorry, Friedrich Schaffen. So somebody called me out for it earlier, you know, paid no attention to anything I'd actually recorded, but they pulled apart. I'm not a native German speaker and I got the name of Friedrich Schaffen slightly wrong. So I corrected it especially for them. So that's 150 knots. 160 and pull back gently and we're in the air. So we put the head tracking on now so we can look around easily. There's some big old engines aren't they? OK. 
Okay. So we're heading off into the Alps. So we're going to be going off down that way. don't get to see the amazing, the, all the work they did with all the chains and everything, do you, if you stand at the front? Let's have a look at some of the instruments. Actually, it's not, those aren't the instruments we want to be seeing, really. And these are the ones I'm interested in, to see what the engines are running at. So you can pretty much run it flat out. not really got the most accurate modelling of the engines but oh well. I've not read up on the radios yet apparently the radios are a piece of work so whether you can actually use the Morse set I don't know So, Yannick, is it Janik or Yannick? I'm, pre I'm presuming Yannick, but I don't know. I always see the kind of pronouncing things as correctly as you can, as a, a mark of respect, really. So I don't really mind when people correct me, but if people just, you know, say, oh, you said that wrong and laugh, that doesn't really help anybody. You could have, you know, helped. I've done some of the Eastern European flights I've done. I've had to go and spend ages looking at Google Translate and and searching YouTube for place pronunciations to to get them a little bit more right than I would have otherwise. speed like about 220 kilometers per hour so we can find out from little nav map what that means in terms of ground speed about 125 knots then So someone said all this needs is a foghorn. Um, do you want me to show you it? So if we go and scoot down the cabin, I'll leave it flying on its own for a moment, because it has no autopilot. So if we... We have to go right to the back to get to it though. <laughs> so we come down and we come past the engines. And, oh, it's up there actually, isn't it? So it's here. Ready? Endlessly amusing. So right at the back of the aeroplane, we didn't go far enough to see it, there's um, a generator room as well. So if you scoot all the way down the back, 
Uh, I can never remember how these open. Oh, it's just quite a small click spot, that's all. So there's the radio room. Apparently it all works. I've not tried it yet, so I'm presuming there's ways of powering it all up. And then you've got the generators right at the back here. Not tried those yet either. Obviously you can go down into the cabin as well, which is quite good fun. But we're not going to do that today. Because we have no autopilot, so there's no easy way of seeing where you're going if you're in the bottom of the aeroplane somewhere. Oh, so if anybody hasn't seen this aeroplane, I ought to do a look through it, shouldn't I? Um, I'll leave this flying then, with it trimmed out. We'll have to look out the windows to see if we're going near the floor, uh, near the ground. Um, oh, we need to open the doors to do it though. So what I'll do, I'll plug the Xbox controller in. So bear with me for a moment or two. The simulator will stutter and ask me what profile I want to use for the Xbox controller, but we'll ignore that. And then we can have a look around the cabin while we're flying. So I just need to rearrange the USB devices a little bit. There we go, I told you it would do that. Keep default. Resume. turn into the valley and turn the drone speed down a bit. Now oh, we can't do it from here can we? We have to do it from in the external view. So if we go insert that will do. Now there is a hatch up here, and we can open that from inside the aircraft, but we're going to use the drone view to fly down through the hatch. Whoop! <laughs> this is going to be fun trying to use the drone view with the aeroplane moving around, it's going to seem like we're drunk. But if we scoot straight through here, there we go. I wonder how much effort it takes to um, have the the china moving around and rattling. <laughs> then you've got the cheap seats, or cheaper seats. So that's the 1% at the far end, and this is, I guess this is the 2%. <laughs> then you've got the galley, and the bathrooms. Whoa! And then you've got the stowage at the back, where they've got things like um, spare cushions and dinner plates, things like that, once they've got smashed and thrown across the floor from my flying skills. I'm going to go back to the cockpit. <laughs> anyway. We were supposed to be going that way. So we can have a look at the map. Yeah, we've gone completely the wrong direction though. Who put this mountain here? That's where we want to be going. Up there. I thought I had damage switched off. 
Okay, we're going to have to restart our shortcut here. Actually, this is a good opportunity to show you how you can start the airplane quickly as well. I don't remember turning all of the damage back on, but apparently I have some time ago. Just shows you how accurately I've been flying this. I've been flying it for months and not smashed a plane. It's amazing, really. We'll put ourselves back in the air in the right place, actually, because there's no navigation kit on the airplane. So... Oh, okay, it's going to do it here. So what we can do, if you've never seen this, if you put an airplane into slew, and the higher you go in slew, the faster it will go. And then if you let yourself out of slew while you're in midair, it will fire up all of the airplane systems automatically. So the airplane will come alive, basically. So we were about here, weren't we? So I just need to be more careful about speed. There we go. So I just did a control E to get the engines up and running. So I'll be a lot more careful now about behaving. I thought, because normally I do group flights without the damage on in case anything silly happens. And it's done it again, look. I wasn't even going f very fast. Oh, is this a bug in the aeroplane? Interesting. I only had 50% throttle. Okay, we need to have a look inside the aeroplane and see what's going on. This could be a bug we found, which wouldn't be unusual. We could have found something. So we need to look at the airspeeds. So we'll do the same trick again. We'll stick it into slew mode. We've unintentionally discovered something worth looking at. And for some reason, flight sim's taking three times longer this time to load up. And here it comes, in its own sweet time. Ready to fly, slew mode. Put us in the air, please. We're going that way. Back to where we were. Let the scenery catch up. We're ahead of the photo scenery. Look, here it comes. Give it a chance before I press Y. Okay, so go. Control E. Okay, so was it speed that was doing it? I think it was actually. So I only need to crack the throttles open. This is massively overpowered. So that's what I was doing. We were overspeeding the airframe. So we're doing just under 200 knots on about 10% power. I did know that it had huge um, redundancy in the engines. But I didn't realise just quite how much redundancy it had. So running flat out on the engines, you overspeed the aircraft very quickly. So we're going to be careful now and keep an eye on the indicated airspeed all the way. We'll try to stay under 200. Try 
relax back into it. So let's get the vertical speed stabilised. A little bit of elevator trim. Just watching this needle here. That's interesting that adding more throttle gave us a, a downward moment on the nose because look, look where the engines are so increasing the throttle pushed the nose down which makes sense So yeah, just on looking at people on about crashing the aircraft, we're just trying to catch up with the Latico Air. <laughs> there were so many of those crashed. So well, I want to know what's on that little dial out there. Oh, okay, we can have to, we can open the window. Well, hopefully it's not going to. Let's see air conditioning. Opening the window. <laughs> That's a technical term, by the way. <laughs> yeah, maybe not that much. It's very cool, isn't it? Paranoid for the rest of the flight now, keeping an eye on the airspeed. Aha! So Mattis is on about he's got the Starfighter radar working. Yeah, there's a program you run outside of the Starfighter that provides the radar. It comes in the add-on folder. It should be in there with it. So if you had it in the, the packages folder, it should be with it. I guess it depends how overzealous um, a Sobo were with insisting that no um, weapon systems are allowed on marketplace aircraft. They may not have even allowed them to distribute it. The fun will really start if anybody makes a, a really accurate Starfighter for DCS, because then you'll be able to use it for its proper job. I mean, there, there is a freeware Starfighter for DCS that's quite good. I think it's based on the Flaming Cliffs F-15 flight model, maybe. I'm not sure. You know, like a, a, a modification of it. Goodbye, Yannick. See you soon. clock in the aircraft as well. I never even noticed that before. I wonder how accurate 
the modelling of the clock is. It's pretty good, isn't it? So we need the assistance of a little nerve map as we come up to some of these turns. Depends how we want to get there really. We can either turn and go the long way, or we can cut the other side of the mountains and go the shorter way. So the long way will take us... If we go via Wallensea, that's a really a nice mountain range along there. So we could do that instead, couldn't we? Go up past Zurich and across the low hills, or we go down the valleys. And then loop down in that way. And keep an eye out for mountains. <laughs> and speed. see the speed out easily. So we're just at 200 knots, look. fun and pass through this grass area at the top of this mountain. I guess we could save some fuel by shutting two of the engines down, couldn't we?
ridge and everything on that ridge. About a quarter of the way there. Waypoint 6 is about halfway. Grindelwald. Keep an eye on the hillside. Crews ever ended up hard of hearing. <laughs> it's not the quietest aeroplane in the world, is it? Hello Thor. Um, at the moment we are, let me, let me adjust the map to put it in view all the time. Open, window layout, minimal, well, there we go, and get rid of the taskbar. So at the moment we are just turning, we are south of Liechtenstein in the Alps and we're heading so we'll be going down through um, past uh, Munster and Sion a bit later on. Yeah, Sion.
So, to make this a bit more interesting, I'm going to go into slew mode and shoot off down the valley because otherwise this is going to take me hours. And nobody really wants to just see a slow lumbering aeroplane lumbering its way along the valleys. So we're going to help our way along a little bit. Because I'm really interested in seeing Geneva, really. I presume it's this way. No, it's not. It's that way. That'll be Sion, is it, below us? Oh no, it's a bit further on, Sion. Just along here. There. So what we'll do is come out of slow mode here. Of course, we're a lot higher than we need to be now. Notice the speed creeping up there. Of course, the, uh, the sim is stuttering because it's loading assets on the ground at Sion. So we're going to fly past the airport and there'll be probably all sorts of aeroplanes down there. Okay, let's go back to slow mode because we really want to go and see this city that's been updated. Anamasa, is it called? Something like that. There we go. So follow Lake Geneva all the way around. There's the aeroplane above us. at this scenery. This is um, photogrammetry. Slowly bringing it in, look. So have they really done it this far out? Okay, let's start from... whoops, I don't want to start from there, do I? the real reason for the entire flight is to have a look at Geneva, which has been updated apparently, and Anamasa, which is just over, it's one of the areas on the outskirts of Geneva actually, but yeah, it's stuttering like crazy because it's loading in a lot of photogrammetry and a massive airport. But it will smooth out, so if I just go along nice and smoothly as we descend, 
and we'll circle the city a few times. So just looking at the map, you can see this area has been upgraded, Anamasi, and then Geneva itself has been updated as well apparently. So it'll be interesting to have a look at it. circle around a couple of times. So engines are on idle and we're just slowly descending down. So this looks like the main freight yard down here. Should do this from the outside view. containers down there. A lot of sheds as well. Now the stadium, a strange place to put a stadium isn't it? Right next to the freight yard. So we're headed directly for Anamasa. And then we'll come back over and land on the lake.
is very high quality, isn't it? It's very impressive. Back towards the lake and we'll try and land this thing. So we're going over the lake and then cut the throttle, turn left, and hopefully run out of altitude and speed in good time. Something is really making it stutter. figure out which way to turn it. That was unintentionally exciting. <laughs> because it's being a massive hindrance to doing this. Oh, 
I can't say I'm massively impressed with the photogrammetry here because I've seen much better elsewhere in the simulator. But it's free, so you can't really complain, can you? Okay, so if we want to kill the engines, the easiest way is going to be to come down the cockpit and turn the magnetos off. But the, the better way to get the fuel out of the pipes is to do this. Cut the fuel to the engines. Notice the pipe work on these is absolutely bizarre. The pipes are going to themselves. So if somebody who understands more about this than I do might be able to explain that. Because they don't appear to go anywhere. Okay, and then we can and then we can go over to the box and if we want to we could get the boat which he'll come and maneuver himself in front of us. I've not played with um, rotating the loop. Okay, so now we've got the boat on here. Let's um, lower ourselves a little bit so we can see this. So then we can go forwards on the boat. And it's not as good as the boat on the um Latakura, I have to say. Latakura, I mean the boat on that is just epic. This one's a bit yeah, it's it's not floating in on its own. It's better than nothing there. Obviously if we want to put the anchor out we can so we can get rid of the boat and say put the anchor in the water please and you'll see how it's already gone in. <laughs> Obviously we could go and turn the electrics off and all that kind of stuff, but I'm far too tired, to be honest, to be messing around with this much more, so I'm going to call it a night. So there we go, there's the, the Dornier Doex. With the help of SLU, we saved ourselves a, a couple of hours of flying through the mountains at 100 knots. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you again soon.